Windows multi-point server, lower your public access PC lab costs. So I'm happy to be here with you today, and we have some wonderful presenters with us. We have Jim Lynch, who's the Director of Green Tech here at TechSoup Global, and we also have some folks from the LaConnor Regional Library. So Joy Neal and Lane Fernando will be sharing with us how they use Windows Multi-Point Server at their library. We do have quite a few librarians on the call today, so that's great to share. And then we're also lucky to have Charles with us from interconnection.org who will be sharing um, his knowledge as well about Windows Multi-Point Server, and he uh, runs a really successful refurbishing company. All right. I guess that's my cue. This is Jim Lynch yes. from TechSoup here in San Francisco. And I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, we're essentially this uh, this webinar is going to um, describe what this this thing is, Windows Multipoint Server. Um, the advantages for mainly uh, public access computing, where people can come to a place and just do whatever they need to do on on the internet. It's also a great thing for training. Uh, it's also a green technology because it uh, saves a lot of money and it saves a lot of energy and also hardware. And then, um, of course, we're gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the case studies we did over the fall. And LaConnor Library was one of those in which we essentially um, sent, we sent Joy and Lane a box full of stuff and asked them to struggle through it all by themselves to see how it worked. <laughs> and then we're going to have a uh, final page of resources we're going we're gonna to have on the slide. And by the way, you'll get all these slides, so you don't have to try to copy down everything. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Charles Brennick, who runs a place called Interconnection. It's a nonprofit refurbishment place in Seattle. Uh, Interconnection is a very interesting place in that it, uh, it places uh, lots and lots of PCs, good refurbished computers all over the world, and especially in developing countries, and especially in Latin America. Uh, uh, Multipoint Server was actually developed in India about seven or eight years ago for the purposes of that education. What they needed to do was to have uh, a very lightweight kind of software system that would create uh, a very easy to develop and easy to configure computer lab for schools. And so uh, it's a fearful symmetry that we have Charles with us today who is quite expert in this. So Charles, why don't you take it away on the next slide. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. So yeah, my name is uh, Charles Brank, Director of Interconnection. And uh, we've been working with uh, TechSoup uh, on this uh, multi-point project for um, almost a year now. So we've done several pilot projects, um, basically figuring out uh, how hard it is to set it up, um, you know, who, who can uh, benefit from this product, and uh, you know, what kind of uh, support requirements will be needed for it. But basically, uh, multi-point is, is a software. It's a um, server-based software operating system that uh, allows multiple people to use one computer. So essentially, uh, from two up to 20 people can use just one computer. And so it's a way of virtualizing the, the desktop on uh, monitors um, or thin clients attached to the, uh, to the uh, server. So uh, I'll talk about this, but it's a way for um, libraries, uh, nonprofits to really reduce their hardware costs as well as you know, energy and other resources costs. Uh, so people who can benefit primarily from this product are schools and education uh, environments. Um, as Jim mentioned, the product was developed primarily for schools, especially those in, in uh, developing countries or places where um, there's a lot of uh, limited access to, to technology, uh, as well as libraries. Um, libraries are great because uh, obviously it's an environment where there's uh, a need for you know, multiple people to use uh, computers, a lot of shared uh, computing um, needs. 
Uh, telecenters, internet cafes, the same sort of scenario where multiple people are using um, you know, workstations and computers, um, and, and as well as uh, NGOs uh, as well and, and charities. Um, other environments like uh, small businesses or call centers are also uh, places where this, where this product is, is very useful. Some advantages of, of multipoint. Uh, first, it's a relatively easy product to set up and maintain. Um, essentially, it's, it's just like any other computer. You, know, you, you start it up, you plug in the different uh, devices, and away it goes. Um, we'll talk about in the pilot, pilot cases uh, you know, how long it took to set up, usually no more than an hour. Um, it saves energy. Um, as, as I mentioned, it's, it's one device, it's one computer that multiple people can share. So instead of each individual person using their own computer, they're sharing one computer. So that obviously means less, less energy consumption. Um, it also is, is a way to repurpose old computers. So it, it, you can use old uh, laptops, for example, as, as devices that attach or that, or that connect to the uh, multipoint server. You can also use old uh, uh, monitor screens, the old CRT type screens, or old hardware uh, can be used as, as the stations, as the workstations that connect to the server. Um, last night we tested out a, um, an old Pentium 4 uh, laptop as, as the client devices. Um, we, uh, it was installed with uh, Windows XP, Service Pack 3, and we launched a uh, program that's already in um, Service Pack called MSTSC. And then it connected to uh, Windows Multipoint without any problems. So the software, all that stuff to connect to Multipoint is already on Windows uh, XP or Windows 7 or, or even Windows 8, um, and, it, and it just works. Um, and then probably the most uh, a cool feature of Multipoint is this thing called desktop orchestration. And here's an, an example. But basically, it allows uh, the administrator to essentially see and control what uh, the other people are doing uh, with, you know, on, their, on their computers. So say, for example, there's a, you know, you're in a, in a classroom environment. The teacher would obviously be the administrator. Um, each student would have a, a, a workstation connected to the multipoint server. The teacher can see what the students are, are doing on their, on their uh, computers. So obviously, you know, if, they're, if they're playing with Facebook or whatever, they, she can see that. Um, she can also um, launch programs for the students from her admin station. She can close programs. She can block certain websites. Uh, so, for example, they can only go to the school website or whatever. Um, she could launch websites, um, and there's just a whole host of um, things that the that the student or that the teacher can do uh, remotely. Um, and like I said, that makes it a, a fantastic uh, tool for for schools as well as libraries. So, uh, for the library scenario, um, the the admin could set it up so that you know they're only able to. Like the, the person using the device can only go to like one uh, website, or can only go to the website that has the, the catalog system for the library. Um, and you can set it up in this, this kiosk mode, where essentially they can, the users can access nothing but the, but the browser, so they can't get into any you know, control settings or anything like that. So a lot of admin features to it. Um, other advantages, uh, like I said, it's fairly easy to set up. Uh, it just takes an hour or two. Um, it runs any, any software that has been developed for uh, Windows Server 2011 will run on it, and a lot of uh, other software. So like uh, uh, Office will run on it, 32-bit applications as well as 64-bit. It prefers 64-bit. Um, and, and it saves uh, electricity. And hardware costs. So generally, the, the figure is it'll save 60% on your hardware costs, as well as 80% uh, uh, less environmental impact. And here's, here's a, uh, a little graph that shows um, the, the sort of the environmental um, benefits. So if there's uh, five people using five individual computers compared to a five-seat multipoint setup, you'll see that there's a huge savings. I mean, this is just comparing, you know, how much electricity uh, five 
computers will use compared to a five seat multi point system, um, you know, how much resources it will take to build five computers compared to one multi point system and, and just kind of down the list. So you can see the, the, the advantages. You know, not only is it great for saving uh, energy, you know, it has that, that uh, desktop orchestration feature, but it's also good for the environment. Um, and so there's different ways that people can connect to a multi-point server. So uh, essentially, like I said, each workstation has a virtualized uh, Windows 7 environment, but you have to con obviously connect to the server uh, to do that. And so one way is uh, you can use these these um, these uh, USB um, stations. And I have uh, pictures that show you what they look like. Uh, you connect directly to the uh, video cards. So you can set up a desktop that has like a two port video card or use two video cards and you would have four port video cards. And so each one of those ports would go to a monitor and each one of those monitors would be its own workstation. So if you have a four port uh, you know, video card, you could have four workstations. Um, and those are ways that you can essentially directly connect to the, to the server. Now you can also use uh, what's called thin clients and those can connect via a network. You'll need a switch to make that work, but uh, you can use, like I mentioned, uh, you know, old computers, old laptops if you're using that scenario, which is like the thin client scenario, and also use what are thin clients, and then I'll show you what those look like. So here's the various Charles, devices we, that. Charles, we did yeah. have a question in the chat um, that was asking about how multi-point server is different from thin clients. It is thin clients. <laughs> okay, there you go. So essentially, I mean, it's. <laughs> You do use thin clients to connect to uh, multi-point servers. So there's other software out there that's really similar to multi-point. So like I'm showing the different devices, there's a product called End Computing. They too develop a product that virtualizes the desktop. There's, a, there's an open source product called uh, Userful that's that, you know, that, that product too virtualizes desktops and you can use thin clients. But it's, it's I mean, it is thin clients. You need you need a software to be able to to run thin clients. But so, so here's the various thin clients that can be used for it. Um, and computing. I mean, there's there's loads of them out there. Weiss is made by Dell. And computing is its own uh, company. Um, and there's also the the multi port multi or the different multiple ported uh, video cards, old laptops, um, all all those sorts of products. We we. Um, for our thin clients, we, we prefer end computing just because they're um, a little more ahead of, uh, of the game. I mean, it's what they do is this end computing or is this virtual computing stuff. Um, let's see. In the uh, multipoint 2012 um, is has got uh, a neat feature where essentially uh, you could bring. You could bring your own device, you know, we call it BYOD, and so that allows this system to work on essentially any device. So you can use iPads, uh, Android tablets, old, you know, laptops. All that stuff will uh, allow. I mean, they they install a client software, which then connects to the server, and so pretty much any device will connect to to the multipoint server. Um, oh, and this this. Uh, this is sort of a, an overview of the uh, kind of minimum hardware requirements. So um, for those who are looking at you know, providing this product or selling um, multipoint servers, it needs a minimum of a Core 2 Duo um, hard uh, desktop and, and 2 gigs of RAM. It's because your multiple people are sharing one computer generally, it needs a, a faster computer. So like an i5 or i7 processor is ideal with uh, lots of RAM. So, um, and so TechSoup offers the product. Um, there's, there's a standard Jim, I edition. I think you're going to add a little bit about this. Oh, yeah. Sounds like I'm up. Uh, this is about what we offer in TechSoup. Um, this is the, the donation on this. Uh, it's important for you to know that uh, this is, we have the latest version of multi-point server. It's 2012. It just actually just came out uh, just over the holidays, so it's very, very current. Um, there's only a single difference, I think, between uh, a premium version and the standard version, and that's the number of users. 
and um, the admin fee for uh, the premium one is about double <laughs> the admin fee for the small one, so or the standard one. And it has a, a relatively few number of languages that uh, it's available in. However, it really works well because we had one lab that actually had it running in both English and and Chinese. And students could one student could be running Chinese, and one person on the lab could be running English. And so it's it's a pretty great thing in that regard. I was surprised how easy that was. Yeah, uh, and basically, it, it, to add different languages, it's just a matter of downloading the language packs, which are which are free. So, uh, for example, with that Chinese installation, the the user they just downloaded the um, Chinese language server pack, and it was a pretty easy setup. Um, one additional thing here is the admin fee from TechSoup Global, and which all nonprofits and are most nonprofits and libraries are eligible for. Uh, refurbishers. Of uh, uh, for whatever reason, aren't eligible to get it from TechSoup. But uh, there is another program that Charles will talk about that has it for refurbishers. And as I mentioned, the standard version is $20, and the uh, multi-point server premium version is $49. This is the usual 5% or 4% of market uh, value is the admin fee for that. Uh, one of the more complex things about multi-point server is it it um, is the same kind of licensing up as Windows Server itself, so that each client, in order to make it work, each client needs its own license as well. And the, the client licenses are eight dollars each. So if you had ten, if you had ten client licenses that you needed, that would be an additional eighty dollars on top of the say twenty dollars for the multi-point server standard. So um, very affordable. And uh, one thing that I, I found that was kind of amazing about it is that non-technical people can actually set it up pretty easily. So that's, that's a very useful thing. A very All useful. right. We do have some questions coming in. Um, one person asked about adding more users. Can you tell us a little bit about how you would do that? Charles, you want to take that? Well, I mean, it's it, pretty simple. I mean, it, it's it's within the so so multipoint. There's a really basic control panel. I mean, and that launches when you start up the uh, the computer, and and there's just a feature in there that says add users, <laughs> and so and so you just click on that and then you know add the person's name or or the username, and and you can enter a password or not. So that's that's pretty simple. Okay, great. If that, if that was the question. Yeah, another question, can all of this be connected wirelessly? And if so, what equipment is needed for that? Do you have experience So you that? can. There's, there, there are wireless thin clients. Um, you know, Weiss makes them. Uh, I, think, I think N Computing makes them too. But essentially it's just a wireless thin client. And that would connect to a wireless, uh, uh, what do you call that, a, a bridge. And, and you know, per, uh, a person could be anywhere. And, and to use that device. Also, this if you if your library has an existing network, so the library is already networked, and this is what we did for uh, the Burlington Library. Um, essentially, you would just put the the uh, multi-point server, you know, in your server room, and then any thin client that then is attached to your or that you know connects to the existing uh, server or, or network would would work. So it could be anywhere within the library system or building. Okay, great. And another question, can you give an idea of a recommended as opposed to a minimum hardware platform for renting multi-point server premium with 20 workstations? I7. So if, so if you need like 20 uh, users, I would get you know, like an I7 processor with, um, I don't know, as much memory as you can put in it. Um, I mean, because it's like I said, everybody is sharing that computer, and it can get a very, uh, you know, it, it can it can stretch it. You know, you can, you can put a lot of, um, you know, requirements on it if there's a lot of users. One thing multipoint um, is not extremely good at is like the flash, flash websites or like flash video. 
um, that flash uses a lot of memory. And so if like multiple people are looking at videos at the same time, um, uh, and they're all using flash, it'll it'll really bog down the system. It'll make the videos choppy. So um, that's that's something to think about. I guess. Okay, we have a great, great number of questions in, yeah, and, and really uh, I wanted question. to address one that came in, uh, which was about deep freeze. Mm -hmm. And oh, uh, yeah. it actually works with deep freeze. We have uh, one library actually running deep freeze. Uh, it took a little bit of fiddling to figure out to, how to make it work. And then the uh, PC reservation system. Now that's one area that we're still looking into, and we're basically in, in touch with um, the people at Microsoft about that particular uh, that particular app or that class of applications for libraries. Um, those those applications basically meter time for each station, and also they do printing to a specific printer, which which is usually coin operated. So we're we're working on finding out the fix for that. It looks like there is one, but we we're still working on finding out what that is. Okay, great. Thank you. That's helpful. And uh, uh, one question about are these one-time licenses? Going back to the licensing, I'm not sure. What do you mean one time? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Uh, you can use Maybe. them forever. I mean, it's just a software license. So once you buy it, it's, it's forever. Okay, great. Do you Roger, mean it, transferring you them? Questions? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Can Roger, it be transferred to somebody can... else or something? Maybe. Roger, if you can clarify that in the chat, let us know if that answered your question or not. And let's see. Um, and someone was going back to the question about adding more users. So is that um, if you go beyond, can you go beyond 20 people if you obtain the premium package? I think you have to set up, Charles will correct me, I think you have to set up another multi-point system setup. If you're going beyond 20, I think that's the limit. If you're going over 20, you'd have to set up another server. So okay. these yeah. servers can be joined. So like, you could have four or five servers, but still have one admin who would be able to, uh, you know, see all of the, all of the users from her admin panel. So that's what I'll talk about with the uh, refurbishing licensing. That's limited to five. Well, it's not limited, but you only get five uh, cows with it. But you could buy, you know, five five systems. So, uh, so Microsoft has a program called the um, Register Refurbisher Program, where organizations like mine um, and others who do uh, a lot of computer refurbishing can get disc discounted licensing for used equipment. Um, and they just came out, or they, or they just started offering um, uh, multi-point licensing through this program. It's uh, multi-point 2011, not 2012 but it's still a really good deal. Um, you can see here's the kind of the, the cost breakdown where you know if you, you just go to the Microsoft store, you've got to pay a lot of money for this product, seven hundred and sixty nine bucks for for premium. Um, and then there's academic licensing and then there's the you know charitable licensing which Jim Jim talked about. But through the register refurbisher program I can buy premium license with five cows for thirty bucks. And so that's like you know, six dollars a station, and it's so it makes it really, really economical. Um, if you go beyond those five five seats, you can do it, but you'd have to pay uh, a kind of the standard price per seat. Or what you could do is you could just go ahead and get a five uh, another five seat um, license pack, and then just, and then just uh, join those two those two systems. Um, and if you're using like a Core two or a older machine, that's probably the way to go, rather than Adding multiple, um, you know, more than five users to an older machine because, like I said, it'll just it'll just bog things down a bit. Um, so Charles, the next slide is yours as well. Okay. Uh, and okay, this is getting back to um, 2012. Uh, so it has this new function that allows users to see what other users are doing. So, so in 2011, only, only the administrator could essentially have control or see what the users are doing. But in 2012, um, users, so you know, students or whatever can, can essentially look at each other's work or share work or share files um, between each other. Um, it has this disk protection software. And so we, you know, we're talking, so 
beforehand there was questions about deep freeze. Um, I understand deep freeze does work on multi-point, but it's not the greatest product for it. Um, there's another product called Rollback. I think it's Rollback RX. Um, and that actually has software built specifically for uh, multi-point. So Rollback software is, is software where uh, you install it, and let's say you know, you're, people are using multi-point, and then you know, somebody comes along and installs I don't know, a virus or, or messes up the settings or something like that. With this rollback software, what it will do is at the end of the day, it will roll things back. It will basically take the operating system or delete everything that's on the operating system and, and bring it back to the starting point of where it started when you first uh, did the install. So uh, in shared environments, in libraries, in schools, you really need that sort of software. Otherwise, I mean, especially you know, a lot of people are sharing computer. You need the, you need this sort of software to keep the, the you know, pe keep people from you know messing up the settings or getting viruses on the on the the system. And 2012 comes with that built in, so you don't need to buy uh, third party software. And the third party software can get pretty expensive, and so this is a really good really good deal. Um, and then also has that better uh, device compatibility, which I which I mentioned where where other devices like you know tablets and that sort of thing can be used as your within clients to, to connect to a, a multi-point server. Um, and it's case studies. Case studies. Do uh, do, should we uh, field some questions here? Because we've got some. This is such yeah. a, a lively bunch. We have wonderful yeah, questions wonderful. coming in. Yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, so we have one question: Will multi-point server run in a virtual Windows server? I don't know. Virtual Windows Server. Yeah, I'd, I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to get back. <laughs> I don't know how, how the interaction is with uh, Virtual Windows Okay, Server, well, so. definitely mark that as a follow-up question then. Yeah. <laughs> if someone can, can speak to that, that would be terrific on the chat. Okay. And someone <laughs> asked about, is there a maintenance renewal cost? No. Okay. No. And how about tech support? What tech support is provided? Well, um, it's a Microsoft product, so I mean, there would just be whatever tech support or whatever comes with uh, with them. You know, the plan is to start is to offer this product through TechSoup. Um, so in, in TechSoup, you'll be able to, to buy essentially complete packages through TechSoup, and you know, Interconnection will be offering uh, tech support as well as, as TechSoup. So if you're buying it off the shelf, you can only turn to Microsoft for your, your tech support. But in the future, you know, we'll, there'll be ways to get tech support. Let me say a little bit more about that. Um, this, this product, uh, as a donation from TechSoup, uh, comes with software assurance. And so that actually does come with uh, free, free phone tech support from Microsoft. Uh, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the Deck. I'm, I've also included uh, an online forum where people can ask questions. Anybody can actually go on there, and it's a TechNet forum from Microsoft where you can ask questions and get answers same day. So there is a bit of tech support on that. Uh, and we'll we'll include links to that in our follow-up email too, so people can find out more about that. Um, another question about re recommended minimum requirements for servers and clients. Minimum hardware requirement for the server, or what for, is? Yeah, uh, for the servers and clients, they said. Well, so the minimum we'll hardware for requirement. The server. Yeah, the server would be a core two, or or above, and that's sort of the bare bones, right? Uh, uh, with two with two gigs of RAM. The, the the clients, there's really no minimum hardware requirements. I mean, clients themselves are. Pretty basic, you know. There's no hard drive in them. There's 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 not a lot to them, and so if it's a network client, you know, you pretty much select anything. And then someone asked. Let me add to that. Oh sure. Uh, one thing that we uh, we're doing is uh, we're going to put up um, it, it, in a day or two. We're going to put up a resource page for Windows Multi Point Server, and on there we're going to have a list. Or we're going to have an, uh, a full article that talks about the different client uh, devices you can use on this, and there are many, as Charles mentioned. Uh, in our 
uh, Charles actually had to go through some different ones to find out which worked best. So that is an area of, I think, concern for this. Uh, and I think what he found was uh, a, a thing called a pluggable. And the end computing clients worked very well for us in the installations. But he, he had to kind of suss that out a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to make that easier for people by putting up an article on our resource page. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a web address for that just yet. It'll just come in uh, tomorrow, I think. <laughs> so sorry about that. Great. Pat had a question about how the monitors and how the mice plug in to Windows Multipoint. Mm -hmm. so Charles, you want to say a little about that? Well, so it depends how you're connecting to the to the server box. So if you're, I mean, if you're connecting via a thin client, the thin clients have USB ports. So that's pretty easy. You just plug it into USB ports. If you're doing a direct connect, uh, which means can you can you the monitor, that is? so. So direct connect is like I said, it's like when you have that that dual port uh, video card. So uh, say you have a box and it has two video ports. Um, each video port would go to a monitor, and then what you would need would be a, um, a USB hub. Uh, and so that and then you would need a USB hub for each station. So let's say you're building a two-person station. Because you have two monitors, you need two USB hubs. Uh, each one of those hubs would be connected to a USB port in the computer. And then each one of those hubs you would connect your keyboard, keyboard and mouse to. Um, and and you know, a lot of the hubs will have like um, uh, uh, speaker jacks and that sort of a thing. But you don't connect the keyboard. So in a, in a two-person or a two-station environment, you would not connect uh, a keyboard, uh, two keyboards directly to the the computer box. You need to connect those keyboards to a USB hub that is then connected to the USB port. If you connect the keyboards directly to the computer box, it won't work. It won't know what to do. Um, and so you have to get these USB hubs. And there's and those things are cheap. Those are like five dollars. You can get them from you know, Pluggable or anywhere. They're they're really easy stuff. There's a lot of them out there. So this is Jimmy, and I uh, just wanted to say that we actually have, uh, we'll post on that uh, resource page uh, a kind of in-depth descriptions of all the different uh, places where, where uh, these things were installed. And actually one place had a direct connect kind of set up, and they did it themselves. It's a place called, um, I forget, <laughs> Reliatech. It's well, Reliatech. Actually, it's a place Connor, local in Connor North California. Direct connect. You know, because we, we use uh -huh. USB, we use USB, um, what's called USB VGA hubs. So you can also buy devices. They're not really thin clients because they're not network based, but it's a it's a USB um, client that has a VGA port and it has like two USB ports, and you can connect those. So a lot of computers now will have like four or six USB. Um, ports on them, and each one of those ports you can connect to one of these USB hubs. Then each one of those will be a will be a workstation. So it's actually pretty easy. Let me just segue uh, away from the questions for a minute and tell you that we did five case studies, and then we um, also concluded a, the, the experience of a, another place called Reliatech in setting Windows MultiPoint Server up. In the case studies, we, as I mentioned. Uh, we basically just sent all the stuff with some directions to each location. And that's two libraries and three nonprofits. Um, and mostly they were in Washington State. And then we just sort of sat by and watched everybody struggle. So, because <laughs> we wanted to see what kind of package solution or, you know, would be appropriate for this. And uh, I think there's one question that says, what, will the, the, what kind of hardware will be in a lab in a box that we're thinking about mm -hmm. developing or probably will develop? And essentially, we're, uh, we're thinking it's going to be the kind of configuration that has um, like a plug pluggable or an end computing set of hubs. And then it's going to have a big, heavy server computer and with uh, probably refurbished uh, 
monitors, LCD monitors, and the server computer will be also refurbished. The the um, mice and keyboard will be new, and all the all the wiring, of course, will be new. So it's it's a fairly simple thing. Uh, Charles has become quite adept at pre-configuring this so that it, it took almost all of these places under an hour to go ahead and plug it in. It actually took more time for them to plug in the hardware pieces than to, than to get on the server computer and then set that all up. It took only a few minutes to set up the server computer in, in the cases that we looked at. Uh, so this, we, we believe that this is highly successful, and uh, the experience was pretty terrific. And so I'd like to introduce now, finally, uh, Joy Neal and Lane Fernando, who, who uh, are with the LaConnor Library in LaConnor, Washington. And uh, Joy and Lane can tell you more about their library and, of course, what their experience has been in trying to set this thing up and how it works. So, um, there we go. Um, hi, this is Joy. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about LaConnor and uh, what we are. We're very small. Um, we have a building that's under 2,000 square feet, 2,200 if you stretch it. We had five public computers. Um, the town is only about 800 people, but we have a service area of about 5,000, so we're really small. I'm the only full-time person um, on staff as the director. We have four clerical staff and no IT people um, on staff until I hired Lane, who kind of knows more than I do. We have two servers that use Windows 2008. And um, like I said, we outsource our tech services to network solutions out of Bellingham, which costs us every time we have to go out for service. We've been using thin clients since 2008. At uh, that time, I was looking for a bunch of different options, and uh, uh, the, one of the tech people recommended to me that we look at thin clients, which we did. Um, our problems were that uh, we had a lot of desktops. Each one was operating totally differently. Uh, they were all over five years old, and they were crashing on a frequent basis. And since I didn't have a tech person on staff. Very often they were incapacitated for quite a while until somebody could come along and fix them. Um, and then each time we had a software change or a patch, each one had to be loaded individually. So very often I'd have a tech person that I was paying who was here for a half a day loading things. So in 2008, we were looking at a budget of $4,000 to replace some computers. And that probably would have been only two computers. So we started looking at thin clients. And uh, what we ended up doing was our first thin client installation. We did not use multipoint at that point. It was just um, a virtual environment on our server. We spent a um, little over, around, right around $5,000 to replace all of the desktops with thin clients. That included new monitors, new keyboards, the whole works. Um, and the nice thing is that, of course, the software is loaded one time. All the patches are done on the server, so we had less tech time, uh, fewer times that the tech people were called out and we had to pay for. And the client licenses, just like was mentioned earlier, um, that's much cheaper than buying a product that you have to load on every single machine. And clients um, have tended to last longer and been a lot more durable than our desktops ever were. And the really nice thing is we don't have tech people uh, on staff, and so the staff's been able to troubleshoot them. Sometimes it's just a matter of restarting them. And you know, and then they're back up and running and nice and clean again. So uh, when we uh, were offered the opportunity to try out the multi-point, um, we, we set it up. We took all of our thin clients down. We set up the multi -point. And this is a picture of Lane and I putting it all together. Uh, and, and like they said, they didn't give us any, they gave us a piece of paper with instructions. And uh, basically, 
put it together uh, by ourselves and, you know, figured out how it worked. And um, and it was up and running in a very short period of time. We were really pleased with it. It's... Um, it, it's faster than having individual desktops running, and, and we really uh, really thought it was a very good product, and it worked very well for us, and we still use thin clients, and we're very happy with them. Do you want to add something, Lane? Oh, definitely. I'll just talk about it a little bit. Hi, this is Lane. Look on her. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the general day-to-day -day use of um, the multi-point server. It was Every day it ran pretty smooth. I know Charles brushed on the topic of the flash and multiple videos running at the same time. But of a lot of our patrons, they come in and, you know, general patrons, they use Facebook, check emails, do resumes, and so sort of all of that. Really. However, um, you know, you get into the YouTube, the higher HD video. We didn't have any um, choppiness in the video with um, – when we installed the multi-point, which we were having with our other thin clients, and we're still having an issue with it right now, something possibly with a bottleneck, but um, with the multi-point, it was pretty smooth all around. Um, sometimes all all five of them would be filled up, and we had people doing some 3D gaming on it, watching videos, and then other patrons doing resumes and such as well. But um, they're very reliable, very reliable setup. Um, I turn them on, and they they run pretty effortlessly for the patrons to figure out. And the control from um, like a like a workplace setting was, was pretty nice too. Um, we talked a little bit about deep freeze. We had it set up so it would delete the cookies and the history. So that was nice. So if people were doing online banking of some sort, then they didn't have to worry about anything like that being left for the next patron coming through. But, um, yeah, easy to set up, and I'm, I'm a big supporter of it so far. Thank you. And, Lane, we did get one question that just came in about um, whether your patrons had their own logins or how did you just use a general login? No, at the beginning of the day, we, it was a general login. So what we do is we start the server up, and boom, they all plug in, and then you just hit, um, once you enter your administrative password, and then you just, they're all on pretty much. You just hit enter, and they go go right in to the profiles. And um, another thing, too, the desktop orchestration was pretty cool, too. So you can actually say if we were talking about the PC reservation issue, um, if they could find a way for that to look. You could send private messages to the individual patrons on each. So if you had it from like a workstation computer that the staff were using, you could say, you know, five minutes or, or ten minutes we're closing up shop, you know. So if you're working on something important, feel free to uh, hurry up. <laughs> That's nice. Good. And what um, speed of Internet access do you all have there in La Conner? Uh, we have a T1 line, okay. which I'm not sure, but it's through the K20 system. Okay, great. And this is Jim. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, another, another question, very interesting question came in, is what's the replacement cost between the uh, multi-point system and the old, uh, the old system that you had, the thin client system? Uh, maybe maybe Charles and I can feel that because we we essentially provided <laughs> the multipoint system at no cost, so that was a pretty great deal for LaConnor because we wanted to see how it worked, uh, and we had a grant to basically do that. But Charles, I'm thinking that uh, with the hundred dollar software costs, what would you guess for a ten station lab is it would be the hardware cost? Sounds to me like it would be somewhere under two thousand dollars for a ten station lab. Is that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you're using um, used computers as well as uh, potentially used monitors, um, you know, you, you can really you can really get the cost down. Um, you know, we're we're looking at offering you know the five seat uh, multi point systems for less than a thousand dollars. You know, um, and and you know that makes it really really affordable. So the d cost difference in this and, a, and the conventional system, it looks like 
Choi was, I think it was $5,000 for the original one, uh, a thin client that you, you installed and that worked pretty well. And this one would be, um, you know, under 2000 for a 10-station lab or $1,000 for a, a five-station lab. Does that sound right? That sounds about right, yes. Much, much less expensive and even less expensive than desktops. Yeah. And it's not, and you know, the other thing to keep in mind is not just uh, the fact that it's a lot less expensive. You also have the, you know, the the admin features to be able to control, you know, how people are using it, and also the, you know, the energy savings, as well. Someone just shared in the chat that they already have six computers and two laptops, so they would just need the software. So, what would the cost be for just the software, in that? Uh, from TechSoup, it's uh, $20 <laughs> with a Windows multi-point server, and then for the uh, each license for your six computers would be uh, $8 each. So what is that? About that $70, the whole thing. That's from TechSoup. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Great. And we do have a couple more questions. you want to do those now or move on to the resources? Uh, this is a great time for questions. I think resources, I'll just explain just briefly what they are. But I would like to, to – the, these are such good questions. Let's, let's yeah, keep really. rolling on that. And one more for the um, library-related. Is it possible to lock this down so that it only can be used for Internet access? Yeah. Yeah, it has a really cool feature called kiosk mode, oh, and great. so that that all it will do is bring up the internet browser. That's it. You can't bypass that. You can't get into settings. Nothing. And so that's the kiosk mode, and you can you can also block you can also block websites. So and you can and also you can um, set up different user accounts so that you know the type of user account that a person using will have different privileges and also different you know ability to look at different sites or do certain functions. And we have one case study where that was the case. They used it as a uh, kind of a kiosk in kiosk mode for just using the the library catalog. It was at the Burlington Library. So uh, that'll be up on TechSoup very soon. Yeah. And and staff, and there's a question of whether the staff could use mm -hmm. their computer for their own purposes. Yeah, I mean it's, uh, I mean the, the computer that essentially is the is the um, multipoint server. I mean it'll it'll be running multipoint server software. So there's certain programs that'll run on the server, and certain programs that won't. But you know you can still use it for you know, for your own purposes. Good. And we did have a question about printing, and I know that that's a big issue in libraries. Uh, Joy, I think that you, 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 people can print in your library. Is that right? Yes, we can. And we didn't have a problem printing with them at all. We did uh, run out of. Uh, we did have to run out and get a USB hub for each one of them because we didn't have enough. Uh, we didn't have a free USB for people who were bringing in their sticks um, to download and print, um, you know, like resumes and storage of their documents and stuff. So we we did have to add to the set, uh, but they were like you know four bucks a piece. They were really inexpensive. Great, good. And another question about kiosk mode. So can a patron access Office or other software? And also have internet access. So, can you specify? Uh, in, no, in kiosk mode, it just it just brings up the browser. That's all it does. It's you can't you can't yeah you can't bring up anything else. But if you're not in kiosk mode, yeah, you can pull up Office or you can pull up anything. But kiosk is just a really limited, you know, uh, kind of a lockdown environment. Okay, but in the regular mode, they could lock down other things, right? So they could have one. That yeah, yeah. Was just it's just like it's just like a Windows 7 or whatever environment. It's just like okay. it just looks like, looks like any other computer. 
Let me uh, let me join on this. Another question came up about whether third-party software works on Windows multi-point server. That's a kind of a general question, and and how the licensing works for that, um, and especially <clears throat> regarding Microsoft Office. Um, so yes, many many third-party software packages work on multi-point, and it serves. You, you just install it on the server computer, and it basically appears on all the clients. However, to be perfectly legal, you have to have a, uh, a license, say, for each uh, Office version. So I forget what that is on TechSoup exactly, but it's about $20 per, per client on TechSoup.org. And, it's, uh, and also the um, registered refurbisher program also carries Office, I think, at the yeah, lower price. Yeah, but it doesn't work. And that's a problem. Uh, Charles mentioned that it, it, uh, an important consideration here is that Office uh, 2007 on up, and including 2013, only work on this. If it's a if it's a previous version than that, then it won't work on on either uh, multi point 2011 or 2012. So once again, only Office 2007 on up for either standard or pro version works on multi-point. And then there's a Microsoft uh, website that has a list, a huge list of all the different software they've tested that works on, on multi-point. There are many, many, many things, like most Adobe products, for instance, work on that. And, and my sense is that uh, each, each client needs essentially its own license for all of those, for all of those sort of classic package software. Uh, of course, it's all different if it's a cloud service. Someone mentioned Office 365 and, mm -hmm. and all of that, <laughs> and SkyDrive. So uh, it, it works really well for cloud services like that, and the people would have to have their own, you know, their own accounts for those things. Mm -hmm. Good. We did have one question, um, a printer that's available through wireless. Would that work okay? Yeah. If it's part of your network, if it's on the network, it's just, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, multipoint is a server. And so, you know, if your printer is already connected to your server, it's, it would work just the same. Okay. And Jim, you talked some about the end user software. Is anything already installed on the server? No. Automatically. So uh, you're, in multipoint, essentially all it is is that, it's similar to installing uh, Windows on a computer. That's all pretty much all you get. There's uh, Charles, are there little kind of useful applications like a calculator and all the different things? No, I mean it's the same. With it's the, like you, you said, it's, it's just the same as any other Windows software. It's an operating system, so you're installing an operating system. The only difference is, is it has that that administration panel, you know, and and. You know, beyond that, it's it's exactly the same. So it has all the helper applications that a version of Windows. Yeah. Would. And by the way, it's, mm -hmm. it's essentially a Windows Seven kind of environment. So if you know Windows Seven, it's pretty much like that. It's exactly like that, in fact. Great. We have about four minutes left. I have a couple more questions. If we can go through a couple really quickly. Um, one person okay. asked when that lab in the box might be ready that you had mentioned. Any hmm. idea on that? Yeah, I, I don't have a, a good date on that, but I'm thinking in the next four to six months because we're hoping that we will have that ready, ready to go. And uh, you could get a very similar kind of thing that Joy and Lane got, just a box full of everything mm -hmm. with instructions, and then you can just set it up. So we're hoping that uh, we don't a have library a library in a box. <laughs> or a library, <laughs> including a catalog, I no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, we also had a question about a replacement cycle. Any recommendations? Uh, a replacement for the hardware? I mean, I'm, it's, it's not maybe the server. Me. I, mean, I mean, I would think the server. It, just like any uh, other hardware. I don't know. It should last. You know, if you get a good i7 server or an i5 server, it should last, you know, five years. Would be my guess. Good, good. Um, we did have a question going back with reservation software. 
any experience with using LibOnline reservation software? Yeah, that's, that's an area that we have to research a lot more. Um, no, we don't have an experience with that. Um, and that's an area that we, uh, that we have to get into quite a bit more, so I'm, I'm thinking that down the road we're going to basically find the, find the way that this reservation software will work on this because we know that that's an essential application for most libraries. So sorry about that, but we're, we're working on that to get you the information on that. Good. And if a patron were to bring in their own tablet, They know. could bring in their own tablets. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. you can. It's. But they need their own license. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to install a license on the device. I mean the license is licensing for as to how many devices can be connected to the server is is managed by by the server software. So if you have a five, um, you know if you have five licenses or if you, if you can allow for five devices, then that's that's what it'll serve. But there's no additional software you have to, like if somebody were to bring in a tablet, there's no additional software they would have to install. They have to run that remote desktop um, uh, application, which, which is already installed. It's already in, in the device. Okay. If it's Windows. Good. All right, I think we got through most of our questions. Just time to wrap up here. Okay, let me just say a few things here. Um, so this article at the top, which is uh, the overview, it has links to where you can get multipoint from TechSoup and also where you can get multipoint server from the registered refurbisher program, both. So just know that it explains all the stuff that we were talking about today. Another thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, we're going to have a landing page with uh, descriptions of all of the, the installations that uh, the test installations like at the LaConnor Library. You'll have all those listed on the landing page. I think that URL, the, the web address there, is wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and then the one at the very bottom, TechNet Support Community, is a place where anybody can actually go there and look at what, uh, what issues people are having and what, this, what the solutions or fixes are for them. So that's a pretty interesting, pretty lively site to go look at if you want to find out more about what, what people are talking about in terms of setting this thing up. Wonderful. Great. So if uh, anybody has any specific questions, that's me, Jim Lynch, and that's my uh, full contact information if you want to contact me about any of this. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Joy. Um, thank you, Lane, all for sharing your expertise and helping us all no learn a little bit more about this software donation product. And we do want to thank our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, which is another product donation. And we're very grateful for them for donating their software so that we can offer these types of learning events to you all. And we will have a um, survey that will pop up. If you could take that for us, let us know what you thought of this event. Let us know how we can help support you in the future as well. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And we will send you a follow-up email with links to all of these resources so that you can investigate more on your own. Thank you.